This is our best model of the universe, dark matter, dark energy, and everything else. But it might also be wrong. For years, cosmologists have been operating under the assumption that the mysterious dark energy driving the accelerated expansion of our universe behaves like a cosmological constant, a constant density filling space. However, the recent results from precise measurements of millions of galaxies seem to be pointing towards an even stranger possibility. Have we got dark energy all wrong? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu. There's been quite a bit of buzz around cosmology again lately, so let's talk about the new DESI results. So before we even begin to talk about the ground shattering results of dark energy, let me tell you about DESI because the technology behind it will literally blow your mind. When I first heard of DESI, I wasn't so impressed. And the reason I wasn't so excited about it was because DESI, which stands for Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, isn't looking at anything new. It isn't finding any new galaxies. It's surveying just one third of the sky and targeting objects we've already seen before and know exist. The instrument, which is installed on a four meter telescope on Kitt Peak, Arizona, is mapping large scale structure of the universe in 3D. By looking at older astronomical surveys, they identified 30 million known galaxies of interest. And these galaxies are firstly bright galaxies, so those that are bright enough to see when the moon is bright in the sky. This means they're pretty close by galaxies, going out to just 0.4 redshift, which corresponds to about 4 billion light years away. And whilst that sounds like a lot, for reference, the furthest known galaxies are at about redshift of 13, so 13.5 billion light years away. But these bright nearby galaxies are surprisingly informative when the universe's accelerated expansion is the strongest. Secondly, DESI will look at luminous red galaxies. These are the most massive galaxies. They're red and dead, and we say this because their stars are typically very old, very red stars. But it's this redness that makes them so easy to select. So we can go out to a redshift of one with these luminous red galaxies. Then they have emission line galaxies. These are fainter, more distant, but their vigorous star formation and hot young stars will create strong emission in distinct wavelengths that DESI can detect out to a redshift of 1.6. And lastly, quasars, which are galaxies with an active central massive black hole in the center. The feeding black holes will emit bright radiation that will easily outshine the stars in the host galaxy, making them detectable out to redshifts 3.5 or even higher. Now here's the interesting part. This is the part that made me change my mind completely about DESI. In order to specifically target these galaxies and to build this 3D map of the universe, the instrument consists of 5,000 tiny little robots. Look, robot, 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 robot. Each of these robots holds onto a fiber optic cable, just 100 microns in diameter, so about the width of a human hair. And these robots, they'll maneuver around one another to position themselves into place for observing that particular pre-selected galaxy in that particular patch of the sky. It's kind of like a little dance of sorts. They're really careful not to bump into one another. The fibers then will collect the light of the galaxies down the fiber, feeding them to 10 spectrographs that split the light into spectra, so rainbows that allow us to get precise measurements of the galaxy distances. So essentially, DESI is 5,000 mini telescopes, each focused on a single galaxy. And in just one year, DESI surveys more galaxies than all other telescopes in the world combined. In this one image, we can see four million galaxies taken from the Sloan survey between the years of 2000 and 2020, so over 20 years. But this is what DESI saw in its first seven months, 7.5 million sources, with more coming over its lifetime of five years. 
Okay, so now back to the science. Desi recently published the cosmological results from their first year of data collecting. And these cosmological results were determined from precise baryonic acoustic oscillation measurements, which I've spoken about previously in this video. In short, baryonic acoustic oscillations are cosmic echoes from the early universe. Echo, 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 echo. Revealing the size scale at which sound traveled before matter clumped together to form galaxies. As the universe expanded and cooled enough for photons and matter to detach from each other, the recoil from the detachment left a ripple-like imprint throughout space, kind of like a pressure wave or a sound wave. This is a baryonic acoustic oscillation. It left the universe with some regions of slightly higher density than everywhere else, and then this is seen in the distribution of galaxies today. So galaxies tend to be clustered at specific distances from one another, a distance that reflects the scale at which the sound waves traveled in the early universe. Plotting the separation of all galaxies, you'd expect to see a bump, an excess of galaxies separated by this characteristic scale. This scale, known as the sound horizon, is cosmology dependent. So it's sensitive to the expansion rate of the universe, H0, dark energy dynamics, so how dark energy has changed over time, and the spatial curvature of the universe, whether it's flat or curved. By the way, this kind of study is known as galaxy clustering, which is very different from galaxy clusters. A lot of people always make this mistake. The Lander CDM cosmological model describes our universe as one with cold dark matter and dark energy described by a constant, the cosmological constant Lander. This has been incredibly successful in explaining a wide range of observations, from the large scale structure of the universe to the cosmic microwave background radiation. However, Dark energy, unfortunately, has not been predicted by the standard model of particle physics, which describes incredibly well the fundamental particles and the forces that make up the known universe. And so far, dark energy, its nature remains unknown. Also within the Lander CDM model, tensions have started to appear between measurements made with different techniques. The two key tensions are the Hubble tension, which arises from conflicting measurements of the Hubble constant H0 that tells us the rate at which the universe is expanding. And then the second is the sigma-8 tension, which is a disagreement about the amplitude of density fluctuations in the early universe. So how does DESI's new results compare? Well, DESI confirms a matter density parameter omega lambda of around 29.5%. And this aligns perfectly well with our previous estimates. So this is pretty good. It means that the amount of matter in the universe is well measured. This is done assuming a flat WCDM model, where W is the equation of state for dark energy and describes the relationship between its pressure and density. In the Lander CDM model, in comparison, this is fixed to a value of minus one. But in WCDM, we instead allow W to be free and fit for it. And not surprisingly, they find that W equals minus 0.99, so practically minus one, few. So this is the blue contours here with the comparisons from the cosmic microwave background measurements in pink and then various supernova 1A surveys in green and orange. DESI's measurement on H0, the universe's expansion rate, is the most precise to date independent of the CMB data. It comes out at 68.5 kilometers per second per megaparsec. However, this is in tension with previous measurements, as you can see in this plot. Even with the error bars, they don't overlap with early universe measurements like those of the CMB, but particularly they have a massive tension with those from the late universe. So like close by using Cepheid variable stars and supernova. This is at three sigma or even higher in tension. But what if instead dark energy is dynamic? What if W changes over time. So we could introduce another parameter, WA, and this would allow W to be time varying. Then in this case, actually, DESI find their data prefers W to be greater than minus one. 
even adding extra information from other measurements like the CMB and supernova doesn't change Desi's view. W is greater than minus one. By allowing time varying dark energy to exist, we have a two to four sigma tension with the Lander CDM model. And what's even more interesting about this is that if this time varying dark energy model is used, this discrepancy on H0 with the Cepheid variables goes from four sigma tension to just two sigma tension, which isn't really significant. So maybe the H0 tension is solved. But what exactly does W greater than minus one mean? W greater than minus one suggests that dark energy's energy density decreases more slowly than that of a cosmological constant where W equals minus one. This behavior is typical of quintessence, which comes from the ancient philosophy where it was used to describe the fifth element beyond the four classical elements of earth, water, air, and fire. In cosmology, quintessence is a hypothetical fifth fundamental force or field that permeates throughout our universe and influences its expansion. If dark energy really is slowly decaying or losing its repulsive force over time, then we may just end up with a big crunch universe, so a reversal of the Big Bang. Anyway, that's all I have for this week's video. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. As usual, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Hey, space cats, fly with me to the stars. Faster than light, soaring past Mars, unveiling the cosmos, new worlds to explore. Fly with me to the stars and more